I'm Kristen and I'm going to be doing a demo on Winsor Newton watercolor. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera so that it's facing downward so you can kind of see what I'm working on. So first thing after this demo, um, if you use code Kristen, um, when shopping at Art Central, um, you can go ahead and um, you'll get 35% off Windsor Newton watercolor. And that's valid through February 23rd. So that's a pretty good deal. And then I'm just going to share some of my social media um, Instagram handles here. Um, so my personal Instagram, if you want to go ahead and follow me, is Kristen underscore Brown underscore Art. And so I do a lot of oil painting, watercolor, and um, acrylic as well. Hi, everybody that's joining. Um, and then I also um, am an artist for the Fine Art Collective. Um, and the Instagram for that is T-F-A-C-N-A. -A. So that stands for the Fine Art Collective North America. And what that is is a network of artists um, that do demos. And um, uh, we have like a lot of informational videos that you can watch on that channel as well on art materials. Um, and then also this is the um, Instagram for Windsor and Newton. So that's going to be the type of paint that I'm going to be using. And for anybody just kind of joining in, I'm going to be um, talking about Windsor Newton watercolor. Um, so first thing I'm going to talk about is how watercolor is made. Um, so anybody who's who's watching right now, does anybody know um, what the binder of watercolor is? So what holds watercolor together? So the binder is gum arabic. And I actually have some here and I can um, open this up. So you guys can kind of guess what gum arabic might be if you don't know already. So gum arabic is um, tree sap and it comes from the acacia tree. And so this is used um, to hold the watercolor together um, but it's also um, used as like a food stabilizer, it's used in incense, so it's used on a lot of other things too. Um, so we would need this to make watercolor and then what's another thing we might need to use to make watercolor? So one of the other components is gonna be pigment. And so I have actually loose pigment right here. And I'm not gonna open this up because I don't wanna, you kinda have to be really careful when you're working with loose pigment because um, you don't wanna breathe that in. And I'm not wearing a mask right now, so. But this is what the loose pigment would look like. And does anybody have a guess as to what color this might be? So you can kinda think about what color this might be and it's a really common color that a lot of us have on our palettes. Um, so this is um, the color that makes ultramarine. So this is what the pigment would look like before it goes into paint. And you could take this pigment and depending on what binder you use, you could make all different types of, of paint. Um, so if you used gum arabic, you'd be making watercolor. Um, if you used linseed oil, you'd be making oil paint. If you used acrylic polymer, you'd be making acrylic. So I actually have um, a pigment that I can use. Um, so this is actually a natural um, pigment that I have. And so I'm just gonna put a little bit out on the paper right here. And I'm not gonna say what it is right away because I want um, people watching or people watching later to kind of guess what this might be. And then this one I like making um, color from just to kind of show how watercolor is made because it's really easy to grind it up. So I'm just going to um, kind of, I'm not going to make a really great pigment with it. Um, with really, really high quality paints, um, one of the, um, the parts of a paint that's really high quality that's super important is how finely ground down the pigment is. So um, in the Winsor Newton Professional Tubes, um, the pigment is very, very finely ground down, um, and that's going to make a really nice um, professional color that stays um, 
you know, a part of the binder and doesn't separate at all. So then there's one more component of watercolor that we haven't talked about yet. And so we need, for like any type of painting, we need a solvent or also called a vehicle. Um, so this is what's gonna make the paint move. So you can probably have a pretty good guess as to what that might be for watercolor because it's in the name. So that's gonna be just water. So what I can do to really show you guys this color, um, and this is the color Carmine. And so if anybody has, has guessed already what this pigment was, um, it's cochineal beetles. Um, so they're gonna make a really nice red color. And you might think it's really weird to make um, paint out of beetles, um, but these cochineal beetles are actually used um, in a lot of things, like especially things that we eat, they're used as a natural colorant. Um, so the Yoplait yogurt <laughs> you eat and like cherry Coke, if you like that, um, will have these cochineal beetles in it often. Or I have like um, a Burt's Bees lip chap that has a little bit of color in it and that has cochineal in it as well. So it makes this really beautiful um, kind of reddish color here. And it's still often used in textile dyeing. Like when I was in Peru, um, they used it to dye a lot of the, the textiles that they were making. And then if I just added water to it, it's probably gonna stain the paper a little bit, um, but it's not gonna be very permanent. So to make it permanent, what you would have to do is add gum arabic into it. Um, and I have actually a liquid gum arabic here. So this is liquid gum arabic. So if you were wanted to make your own watercolor paint, you could add this into a pigment um, and then it would make it into a watercolor. So just adding water to it is will kind of make it into a paint that you could stain something with, but it's not gonna be permanent without the binder in it. And you can see that the, the pigment hasn't been really ground down very well, so it would make a much nicer paint if you really, really ground that pigment down. Um, or you can buy pigment that is already, um, that's already ground down like this one, so already milled. Um, just with a lot, like a lot of not natural pigments, um, you would want to wear like a respirator while you're working with them because breathing in um, certain kinds of pigments can be toxic. I'm going to move this one to the side. So this is just an example of a professional grade and student grade paint. So I have two different types of paint out here. So I have the um, Winsor Newton Cotman, um, which is the Winsor Newton student grade paint. And then I also have Winsor Newton Professional as well. Um, so I'll probably be using a little bit of, of both here. But um, can anybody guess um, what the difference between um, these two different types of paint might be? So we know that one is definitely cheaper um, because usually student grade paint is like a more inexpensive option um, if you're just starting out with painting. And I really like Common as like a, a starting out paint. Um, if you are um, more of a professional artist um, or you think you're gonna be painting more like in the long run, um, you can use the professional grade paint. So it's a little bit more expensive, but it's actually gonna last a lot longer um, because the pigment load or the amount of pigment in the professional grade paint um, is going to be higher. So that's gonna be the main difference between them. Also in the student grade Cotman paint, they're not gonna be using any of the really expensive pigments that go into the professional. So some of the pigments are gonna be the same, but any of the ones like, um, a lot of you might be familiar with the series number that is on the tubes of paint. So this one's a series three, um, and there's like higher series numbers than that. Um, and so the higher the series number goes, the more expensive the paint is gonna be. So the the common ones don't really have all those like really high series numbers on them. Um, so they're all gonna be pretty more like inexpensive um, pigments. 
And then as, as I'm demoing, feel free to ask questions um, in the comments. And this video is going to be posted afterward. So um, even if you're watching it after the fact, um, you know, feel free to put comments in there or any questions. Um, and I'll be checking it to, to answer any of those. So this is just pa painting out the professional um, Windsor Newton and then same color in the Cotman Windsor Newton. So, you know, pretty, pretty good for a student grade paint. Sometimes you'll notice like when you're using like, um, like I like to, like if it's like a little kid's kind of watercolor set, oftentimes the colors are so light and diluted and it's, you have to use a lot of it um, to get a really saturated bright color. Um, but with the Cotman, you can get a pretty good um, bright mass tone. Um, so th that's still really good. But when we look at the professional, um, we get, we can see that difference in the pigment quality there um, and the amount of pigment that's in the paint. And I probably needed much less of this color to paint that than with the student grade one. But like I said, for um, if you're just starting out with watercolor, I would say the Winsor Newton Cotman is a really, really good um, paint to start with. Um, then if you're getting a little bit more serious about it, um, the Winsor Newton Professional um, is a great way to go. So I'm going to put out one of my, one, a color that I like a lot, um, and I think it shows um, mass tone and undertone really well, and I'll kind of explain what that means. So this color, and you can see <laughs> my tube is like very used up because I, I really like this color a lot. Um, so this color is called um, Brown Matter. And I'm just going to take, I just want to show it like straight out of the tube. So see how dark it looks right out of the tube? We would never paint watercolor this thick. But I just want you to kind of see what that would look like um, right out of the tube. And this gets kind of confusing like when you have like a pan set of colors or you look at a color right in the tube. Um, it can be kind of deceivingly dark, right? So what I want to show now is the undercolor of this. So I'm just going to add some water to it. And you can see that actually it's not just like a really dark brown color. It has this really, really nice kind of um, undertone color to it. So when we're talking about mass tone and undertone, mass tone is the color um, before it's diluted. And then when it's diluted, the color that shows up when it's more transparent is called the undertone. So that's really important to think about when we're when we're talking about like layering a watercolor painting. Um, we'll want to think about mass tone and undertone and how the same color can look very different um, in both ways. And then this is the same thing just dried. So we can see this is what the mass tone of that brown matter color looks like when it's dry. And this is what it looks like when it's wet. And then for anybody just starting out, I'm going to show you um, three colors that are going to be really good. Like if you want to just get three colors to start your palette, um, these ones are going to be primary colors that you'll be able to get all the in-between colors with. So they would be really good to start off with. So I have um, Permanent Rose. So that's a nice bright kind of pinky color. Um, and then I have Windsor Blue, and it this one is Red Shade. So you'll notice there's Windsor Blue Red Shade and Windsor Blue Green Shade. Um, you want to go for the Red Shade if you're using it as a primary color. Um, the Green Shade is, is as it, it would suggest, a little bit closer to green. And Windsor Blue, for anybody that doesn't know, is the same as Phalo Blue. So if you've seen Phalo Blue um, with other brands of paint, um, it's the same the same pigment. And then the last one is Windsor Lemon. So that's going to make it make a nice bright yellow. So I'm going to show what these look like all together and how we can get in between colors with those. And for anybody just um, tuning in, I'm doing a demo on Windsor Newton watercolors right now. So I'm just taking, I already kind of mixed up um, some of the colors with a little bit of water because I want to dilute them a little bit.
And then I'm using a lot of um, paint and water here because I want the colors to be able to blend together really well. So if it was too dry, it might dry before I get a chance to have them blend at the edge. And I'm using maybe a little bit more yellow just because yellow is going to be a weaker color. And I think the other colors might overpower it a little bit more. So then I'm going to go ahead and put that permanent rose right beside that lemon yellow. And then I'm going to let them kind of start to blend together at this edge. And because the both colors are really wet, they're going to naturally kind of bleed together. Um, but I can kind of wiggle my brush on the edge and kind of help it along a little bit too. So what I want to happen here is to get like a nice little um, bit of that like bright orange color where they mix together. And if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the comments um, and I can answer them. If you have any watercolor painting questions, I can answer those. So now these both, both of these edges are wet, so I can go ahead and take the blue color and connect it here. And this blue is a very strong color, so I'm using a little bit less of it because um, it can really overtake color mixtures really easily. So I'm just gonna blend the edge um, where it's hitting the permanent rose there. So the colors for this again were um, lemon yellow, or Windsor lemon, um, Windsor blue, and permanent rose. So you can see here where the blue and um, that permanent rose meet, we're getting a nice bright purple. And so you might have found out that like <laughs> just any red and any blue don't necessarily make purple. Um, so these ones do make a really nice purple. And then lastly, I'm gonna just grab a little bit more yellow just to re-wet this edge. And then this is gonna make us a really nice, vibrant, bright green when these two mix together. So you can see that like, if you were just starting out and you wanted to try um, some more professional gray colors, um, really starting out, you just need these three colors and you'll be able to get um, a good amount of color mixtures with them. So I'll hold this up so you can kind of see here. And then I have one that's dried. Um, so the, it's it's pretty dark. Watercolor dries lighter. Um, so this is still wet, so it's pretty dark there. So I'm gonna show the, the one that's dried too. <clears throat> so this is the one that's dried there. And you can kind of get a better sense of that bright purple that that creates. So that's using a three primary set. Um, if you wanted to buy a few more colors, this would be the recommended um, watercolor palette for Windsor Newton. Um, so this would be using Windsor Lemon, Windsor Yellow, which is a little bit more of an orangey yellow, Permanent Rose, which is um, the red we use there, um, so that's going to be your more pinky red. And then if you want a more um, like orangey red, Scarlet Lake is a good option for that. And then uh, French Ultramarine is going to be a more purpley kind of blue. So good for making purples. Um, and then in this case, because we have a more um, purpley blue there, then uh, Windsor Blue Green Shade um, is going to be a little bit better if you're going to go ahead and get six colors because that's going to make even brighter um, greens when you mix it with the um, Windsor Lemon. So another technique that I'm going to show, and I was sort of using it um, a little bit as I was painting, but that's wet into wet. So some of you may be familiar with this technique for watercolor painting, um, but I really like to use it a lot. Um, like this is a painting that um, I recently finished. And I used a lot of wet into wet um, in the sky there. 
Another thing you'll notice in this painting is I worked light to dark. So I think when you're starting out with watercolor painting, um, doing all your lights and then all your mediums and then all your darks and little tiny details last um, is going to be really helpful. So like this tree here, I did that at the very end um, because if I had done that um, before I did the background, because watercolor is soluble again when it's wet, I would have that black would have bled all into the sky there. Um, so that's like the main reason that you want to work um, light to dark. Also, then it just gives you the more ability to keep layering and keep working on a piece and it doesn't get overworked. So I'll just kind of show you how to do a wet into wet. So when you're doing a wet into wet, what you want to do is put water down first. And you could do it into a shape if you want, um, or if you're just doing a sky, you know, let it be kind of natural. Maybe I'll make this one into kind of a, well, let's do a heart shape, that's cute. So I'm just kind of drawing out that shape with the water. And what the water is going to do is it's going to prevent the, the color from going um, anywhere else. So it the, the color that I put in isn't going to go past where I have the water. So you don't want too much water on there, but too little water, and it's not going to really do what you want it to do. So in some areas where I have a big puddle of water, I'm just going to take paper towel um, and just pull a little bit of the water out with my brush so that it's not super, super wet. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to take those primary colors that I have out. And see how you can just kind of like drop them in. And then it's not going to stay in this polka dot kind of texture because of the water. It's just going to kind of keep moving around. But it's not going to go past where that edge of water is there. And one kind of um, cool tip that I found out is that if you don't want, if you want to do a wet into wet, but you don't want it to flow quite this much, you can um, put gum arabic into um, your wet into wet, and that will kind of slow down the speed of um, how the paint is traveling. Because it's a little bit stickier than, than water. So that would be an example of a wet into wet. And as it dries, and one kind of um, thing that I think is helpful is drying off your brush. And then you can come back and you can kind of pull back color. You can blend things a little bit more. So you can keep working it um, up until when the surface starts to dry. Um, so this is going to look a little bit different once it's dry because the color is going to kind of keep moving a little bit. Um, but that's essentially how you would do a wet into wet blend. Um, and then the contrast to not a wet into wet blend would be when you get really hard edges. So an example of non wet into wet would be like this hard edge here. So if the other color is not wet, it's going to create a hard edge. If both edges are wet, they're going to create a really soft blend like that. And for anybody just tuning in, um, my name is Kristen, and I'm doing a Winsor Newton watercolor demo. Um, so if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments section, um, and I can answer those as we go along. Um, and this video is also going to be posted afterward, um, so if you missed something, you can go back and look at it later, too. So I have a couple dried um, wet into wets here. So this one would just be like kind of drawing out a shape. So I drew out a shape of a flower and then I dropped um, a bunch of different colors into that water and it created this really cool um, wet into wet silhouette. This one here too. So you can see a lot of um, different shapes kind of drawn out. And then on this lizard, actually, I'm seeing that I put some iridescent medium on it. Um, so the iridescent medium, maybe I have a better one that has iridescent medium. But can you guys kind of see how the, the lizard one is like a little bit sparkly? Um, 
or a little bit like shiny. Um, so that's from adding iridescent medium over the top of it. So I just kind of glazed it over the top and that looks like this. So it's a Winsor Newton watercolor medium called iridescent medium. And that can be really nice. Like if you're doing like a little watercolor card for somebody and you want to give it a little, a little sparkle, um, you can put that over top. And then this one here is using masking fluid. And actually I used a little bit of iridescent medium on this one too. Um, like you can see a little bit of the shine here. But what masking fluid will do is it you, you put it on and then you take it off and it creates really crisp edges that remain the white of the paper. And here we can see that I did um, what's called a gradated wash. And um, I think I have time I can show you guys how to do that. So a regular wash, and I'll just do it on this one here, you kind of want to have, I'm just going to hold it at a little bit of an angle, but it works best if you have your board at a slight angle. Um, and then, and as you get kind of um, more advanced with watercolor, this is like a little bit less <laughs> important, but um, if you're just starting out and you want like a really flat wash, you can kind of follow a motion like this. And so you want to keep a drippy edge. And so what this is going to do is it it's going to create like a really really flat wash in your background. So as long as you're not going back up into what you painted and you keep working your way down with that drip, that's how you're going to get those really nice like smooth flat washes there. And for anybody watching right now, um, if you are shopping at Art Central and you use code Kristen, um, you can get 35% off on Windsor Newton watercolor right now. So a really good deal. So you can kind of see how this is going to give me a really nice flat background in the end. And then you're always going to have a point where um, where it ends here. And you can kind of see because my, my starting point was still a little bit wet, you can barely even see where I started off. Um, and then to pick up this extra moisture, you just come in with the dry brush and then you can just pull that back up. So that's how you get like a really nice smooth background on a painting without any, any lines in it. Um, if you're doing a gradated wash, um, you can do a similar thing. Um, I'm actually going to do what's called a split wash um, around the heart this time. So I'm going to start up at the top here. And I'm going to go right around. So I'm keeping that nice drippy edge so that it stays really smooth. And then since this is ending, I'm going to pick up the drip, but I want to keep the drippy edges right here because I'm going to transition to the next color. So I'm going to transition on both sides like that. So this is called a gradated wash. And so again, you still want to keep following um, on both sides so that you keep that drippy edge on both sides. This will ensure that the wash stays really smooth and you don't get any like weird edges in it. So I'm going to clean my brush off and then I'm going to go into the last color here. And if that edge is wet enough, they're going to kind of bleed together and create a nice smooth wash. And so this is kind of why you want to have your um, paper on a little bit of an angle so that it creates a nice gradation like that. So um, if anybody has any questions, I think I'm gonna finish up here. Um, 
this will be posted afterward. You can post them in the comments and um, I will go ahead and respond to those. Um, and thanks for tuning in.